Hello, hello, friends and family. Welcome to Nanaba's Kitchen. Today's menu presents three lovely soup recipes. I have been waiting for a while to bring this your way. My precious little gift to you all, that warm blanket to carry you through the cold season, to bring you some comfort and help you recuperate from feeling under the weather. Let's begin cooking, friends, with our first soup on the menu, which is a vegan vegetarian roasted bell pepper soup. So you need three large red bell peppers and two small Roma tomatoes. You wanna put some char on it for that smokiness. If you have charcoal, even better. So that shouldn't take more than five minutes. Once you've attained a good char, set them aside for easier handling. And that also gives you the chance to begin preparing your soup base. So I have olive oil, shallot, onions, garlic, leeks, carrots, and also some mushrooms. I add some salt and crushed black pepper and cook for about two minutes. Then I proceed to add ginger powder, turmeric, crushed black pepper and some more salt. It is important that you over season at this stage because you are preparing your soup base. This all will be diluted eventually. You'll cook for about five minutes with the lid on. Go back in and stir all the ingredients together. And at this time, you're going to add your charred ingredients, your bell peppers and the tomatoes. So what you wanna do is just remove all the seeds from it and just add it to the pot. Stir everything together to combine and add the lid back on. And let it cook for 10 to 12 minutes on low heat. Now when you go back in, you'll notice that your soup base is perfectly formed. You stir it together, you see the juices around it is thickened, is very concentrated, and that's exactly what you want. We are almost done cooking the soup. What just went in is our coconut milk. Again, this is a vegan rendition of the soup. If you're not vegan and you prefer dairy products, you can use whole milk, heavy cream, even skimmed milk works perfectly. Stir it all together, taste for salt. If you don't have enough salt, obviously, you want to season a little more. And stir it all together. Now you're going to bring it to a gentle simmer for about two minutes and you're done cooking. Simple as that. And the flavors are spectacular. The next step is the final step, which is blending all your simmered ingredients together till you have a smooth, mousse-like texture. And pour it into your serving bowl, and voila, you have soup. It is warm, it is velvety, it is silky, it is just so pleasant on your taste buds. And now you have the opportunity to introduce some crunch because this soup is one note in terms of its texture. So add some almonds sliced thinly, some fried onions, scallions, and some Fresno chilies sliced thinly, and you have the perfect bite. All the flavors are working well together. That smokiness from the char and that coconut is so present, it's perfect. Next on the menu is our chicken noodle soup, cooked Vietnamese style. So it is inspired by the Vietnamese pho, which is one of my ultimate indulgence. In this baking pan, I have scallions, celery, carrots, ginger, and also some shallot onions. Now I'm going to add some salt on each layer because this is going to go into the oven to caramelize with the rest of the ingredients. Then I also add some olive oil onto it because that's really going to help the caramelization of these ingredients. Next thing I add some crushed, slightly crushed um, garlic. So that also goes in and then I place my chicken on top of these ingredients. Now I have chicken thighs deboned and skinned. Now I also have some chicken wings, mainly to extract the flavor from the bones in the chicken wings. So I add some more salt, crushed black pepper, and some olive oil, 
and then it goes into the oven for 20 minutes using the broil option so the highest heat level in your oven and in 20 minutes all the ingredients should be concentrated in flavor the perfect soup base now while that's going on let's gather some spices now because the spices are small in size we're gonna need this cloth which has a drawstring to contain the spices it's a lot easier to remove them once they've done their job so I have one black cardamom and then I have two star anise for a licorice flavor and then I also have some cloves and some black peppercorns all the ingredients are listed in the description box so check it out now I also have a combination of coriander and fennel seeds. In the absence of the fennel seeds, you may substitute with aniseed. They have the same flavor. So pour all of that in there as well. And now I have the bark of cinnamon. So cinnamon stick and two dry bay leaves. Now you want to tie this really tight because you don't want them to pour out and that's perfect and it's ready to go into the broth. 20 minutes later, see how caramelized and even charred these ingredients are. Now you want your stock pot ready and you're going to place all these charred ingredients into it. Pour the juices that you obtained from cooking in the, in the oven into the pot as well and also make sure you scrape all the little good bits from your baking pan and incorporate it and then this here is rock sugar you need that in your soup pot and then add the spices now if you don't have the rock sugar no problem you can use one teaspoon of sugar i also just added some salt and now i'm adding three liters of water we are ready to cook this broth Soup pot goes on to the medium heat for two hours. Until the flavors are all very well developed, the broth is extremely flavorful. Perfection. Now, the original pho requires bones. So we use beef bones, pork bones, and some brisket, whatever kind of meat you want in there. But because we're using chicken, and chicken doesn't really take long to cook, we don't need to cook for 20 hours plus. Just two hours will do the job. Now once it's done, and it's been two hours, you go in and fetch the chicken thighs because we're going to shred them and then also remove the spices that just came out. Shred your chicken and set it aside for serving. Next, you strain all the broth from the vegetables, just like that. And that's also in preparation for serving the final product. There you have it. This broth is very, very flavorful and tasty, well seasoned too. So I have some vermicelli, which is rice noodles, ready. Put some of that into your serving bowl, add your shredded chicken, some Fresno chilies, some thinly sliced white onions, also some coriander leaves or cilantro, and also add some scallions and pour your broth right onto it. And also add some more crunch and freshness, why not? So add some red cabbage or white cabbage, whichever one you prefer. And there you have it. Now I have some shito, which is Ghanaian chili oil. I'm just going to put some of the oil from the shito for that kick and extra flavor. And you are ready to dig in. A soup bowl of brilliance. Next soup on the menu is our meatballs soup inspired by the Mexican or Spanish abonigas soup. So you need your ground beef and to spice and season it up, you have some salt crushed black pepper and some garlic powder. I also have some finely chopped shallot onions, followed by some rice. Yes, some rice. You cannot have abonegas without the rice. Now go in with your clean hand and work all the ingredients in together to combine them perfectly. 
and you're going to form your meatballs. To form the meatballs, wet your hands as you go because then it doesn't stick to your hands and it just slides off nicely and it, it's a lot smoother. So form, look at these meatballs. They look like they're going on a catwalk. <laughs> all right, so they're all formed nicely. We're ready to cook. Now your pot needs to be on medium heat and you're going to pour in your olive oil. Now once the olive oil goes in, the next thing you're going to add is some garlic, finely chopped. Then you're going to add some Fresno chilies, one small bay leaf, some salt, and you're going to just stir it together to begin sweating these ingredients. Add some crushed black pepper and your tomato sauce. Added a little more tomato sauce. All the ingredients are listed in the description box for your convenience, so be sure to check them out. You're going to cook for five minutes and then add your chicken broth. Now this is homemade chicken broth and it doesn't have any sodium in it. You may use the store-bought chicken broth, just make sure it doesn't have any sodium. And also add some water to it. Bring it to a boil and then begin immersing all of your meatballs. Cover the pot, let it continue to cook on medium heat for about 20 minutes, by which time the meatballs will be nice and juicy. All the rice will be cooked through as well. The rice gives the meatballs a very interesting texture and makes it juicier. Now we are adding our holy trio, a mirepoix, which is a combination of carrots, onions, and celery. You need that in most soups. When you prepare soup, you need this trio in there. And it's going to give it a beautiful texture as well. So I cut them into big chunks. Now I add a combination of Yukon gold potatoes as well as red potatoes. And there you have it. See how hearty this is. Taste for salt. If you don't have enough salt, season some more. And stir your ingredients together. You're going to bring this to a simmer and cook for about 12 more minutes. This is an entire meal on its own. It's very filling, it's super comforting, and it's that blanket, that special gift from me to you. Yes, it will warm your soul through and through. You'll see that some of the rice releases from the meatballs and thickens the soup, which is just perfect. Your soup is done cooking. It took about 40 minutes and you want to freshen it up with some cilantro and serve. There was soup for everyone. Our vegans and vegetarians, our meat lovers, everybody got something. So there you have it. Look at this perfect bite. I hope you try these recipes. I enjoyed putting them together. Thank you so much for watching. Make it a great day, friends, and as always, have fun, especially in that kitchen.